Hey, they're on. See that? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. That is amazing. Holy crap, look at that. Doing something. This is exciting. I thought I wouldn't get much out of that. I wasn't sure. I've shown my successes in these videos before, but I wanted to show all of my footage of me experimenting with different ideas. I did test this once and I got a reading off of it. And then Some of them seemed kind of ridiculous because it was based off of maybe a simple image with no information, but I tried every idea I had. Um, I haven't really figured out <clears throat> how to do this yet. I now better understand what is happening here. As the video goes, I'll post a picture or a graphic of what I was learning because looking back, I could see what I was trying to do. Well, there you have it. Here's a flashlight that's run on cement. I'm gonna try to just present these videos as uncut as possible. Based off of these small successes, I know that there is incredible technology that we can have in our hands that we ourselves can make in our own backyard. So the best investment I've ever made is this multimeter and because I'm learning so much with it. Basically you could just take these metal uh, prongs, prods, whatever they're called and then just get some copper and aluminum plates and then just put stuff in between it uh, like a piece of glass or this uh, quartz rock that I found and just got to make sure the connection is really well on there and then just do a bunch of testing just put your finger in between it test it on the multimeter see if it gets volt I got a half volt out of my finger it's funny but I keep learning about this stuff and then I went to the cement battery and I just put Portland cement into this Mountain Dew can, put a little copper coil in there, and that's pretty much it. Made sure the copper coil didn't touch the side of the can, but that made the negative and the positive metal. And then I still have a volt out of this, and it's been a couple months, so I still have a, about a volt. And I've done other tests with other things. This one I just put my leftover cement in between a copper plate and an aluminum plate and I got about a volt out of that when I made that and it's gone down just because of the connection and that's the that's comes back to my original problem is that that connection uh, needs to be better uh, either this plate needs to be embedded in there just like this uh, coil is embedded in there so there's good connection and this side of this can keeps a good connection all around so this has been my most reliant battery reliable and uh, so you could probably use a bolt or something other than a plate that goes on top so it's actually embedded in the in the uh, cement so I've just been going with different configurations. I've been trying to see how small I can get this to uh, to get the same amount of power. And I'm trying to go as simple as possible so it's not complicated. So you could find materials around your house. And so it's it's not this complicated, expensive thing or things materials that you can't get on your own. I really want to do this simply so you can just do it quickly and test for yourself. So, but you can do these initial tests on your own. Uh, you're just going to need a multimeter uh, because this is going to teach you more in uh, an hour of doing multimeter stuff, just testing different things. You'll learn more in an hour than you would four years of high school. I promise you that. we This stuff they're not going to teach you uh, for many reasons because the 
battery companies are going to go under if they teach this stuff. So this is uh, why I have to learn on my own. I have to sift through the the hoaxes out there and and the informa the bad information and people that kind of lead you off the trail. But it takes a lot of research to figure this out and to sift through all the mis disinformation out there. This is my cement battery uh, flashlight that I made, and I have a video on this. Uh, this one uh, has been going, I would say, for a month or a month and a half. Um, I did have to dump out the cells that I made uh, when the cells actually cured from the cement. Um, I had to take them out and clean off the connections. I use these tea light candle things kind of as a miniature pop can battery. So I made them smaller and I put a little copper plate on top of it. So basically I just took a piece of copper and just put it on top of it and I have a video on that. But I made about 12 of these and put them all in series and stacked them up inside this thing. And that was it. That's all that there was to it. And so just like I said, I had to take them out and clean them off. And, um, and then the connection was better again. And also, I believe um, I had to put, I, I put water in there uh, just to moisten it again because I think the water helps with that connection on the sides and with the plates that I put on top. So when I put that water in there it helps that connection. This one I haven't put any water in and it still has a volt and it's been more consistent. So it's not that it's not the alkaline, it's not the acidity or whatever it is on the cement. It is the water helps the connection uh, in in my theory, I guess, um, is the reason why it loses that uh, power is because of the it needs that connection. But it's been consistent every time I um, use this or test this battery. It's I get a volt out of it, and I'll just show you real quick that it, it's that it's still getting a full. So, and I bet uh, even the connection on this pop can battery um, isn't the best either, but this has been the most consistent one so far. So, if I get a good connection here, it'll probably go up to a volt. Uh, there it goes. So a little, uh, a little more than a volt DC current, uh, or I'm sorry, DC volts, direct current, and the amperage isn't that good. It's just uh, I'm learning how to increase the amperage, and that's been the challenge of almost everybody that's been making these. Um, <clears throat> but it works. I mean, it, I get a little bit of amperage just from this, and um, <clears throat> so I, I'm, suspect, I'm suspecting that when this uh, flashlight battery or when these uh, cells inside this battery start drying out, it's going to start going dim again. And then if I put water in it, moisten it, it makes the connections better uh, with the metals and then it'll, it'll brighten up again. But it keeps going, so it's pretty neat. I mean, you make your own battery and have your own light. So now you could... It makes me relax a little bit knowing that no matter what happens, if batteries go out and everything, uh, you know, if the grid goes down, I have a way to make batteries. And this is not the best, but it's a little light. And I think that's just phenomenal so far. And... Uh, just the fact that this battery, this uh, pop can battery has been getting a consistent volt. And I, I showed in another video that I put a couple of them together in series and I got a LED to light up with it.
So this is just kind of recapping what I've been doing. And the, the challenge, like I was telling you, is keeping that connection with the plates together. And so you can get a more consistent battery like this and but just make it smaller so I've gone as far as you know making the cells smaller uh, with these just with uh, with a penny and a quartz rock that I drilled with a, a core driller and I drilled it out of these uh, quartz rock that that my granddad has cut in plates so I actually put this multimeter on this cell, these cells that I made. So I get some voltage out of it. Um, it's just not the best. I thought I would get more than that. And these, if I wasn't clear enough, this is basically just a penny uh, quartz rock that I cut out, and then a aluminum plate, and then that's it. It's just sandwiched. And then I put some of this wire glue on there. And this wire glue is not really doing the best bondage bond on there. And well it's doing a good bond, kinda. <laughs> and it it's not really making a good flow of electrons or whatever they are. And so the trick is to try to get that contact between the to the, the plates, the uh, copper penny and the quartz rock and the aluminum. And I don't think it's necessary to use quartz rock um, like this because glass is is the same thing. It's made of sand, which is mostly. Uh, quartz and the basically glass is quartz it's silica uh, and so they they process it melt it down make it clear but this is the same thing as this quartz rock so you can just I'm thinking just get a little piece just get a little piece of glass and you can actually put it between two plates and then you'll get a reading off of it. It'll be a small reading, but... <clears throat> and that's where the challenge of getting a good connection comes in. So I have a lot of other ideas I'm doing. This is just one of them. I just wanted to give you a synopsis or a kind of a catch-up um, overall what I'm doing. And I am also going to be working with, with uh, really powerful earth magnets and I have some coming in the mail that are donut shaped so when I use when I use uh, these this configuration here I can put those donut shaped magnets on here and see how it affects it I did some initial tests on that um, it's I can't replicate it enough to really show it right now but um, uh, Maybe I should show footage of me trying to do all these different things. But I just wanted to catch you up on what I'm doing so far so that you can take off on your own. And if you if you take off on your own with this stuff, uh, there's other videos of people doing this. You just have to make sure that there's, or you have to be aware that there's a lot of people making this, making a lot of stuff that's, it's like, it's useless information. And I would say 90% of it out there is useless information. So it gets a, it's a really difficult sifting through on the internet to really find, you know, what is true, what works. And so I don't, I just go through and, and, and kind of go with my gut. I'm like, okay, maybe this is true. Um, and base it off stuff that, that we already know is true. And getting a multimeter helped, like I said, because it really confirms a lot of things and, and that you could just test on your own and say, oh, that's true, it happens.